Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we'll address another very important question. Does a good Venus nullify a bad 7th house? Wow, very interesting. <laughs> Many times people have this question or the other question. Does a good 7th house nullify a bad Venus? Okay. So half of the times, uh, not half actually, 100% I would say, these, these queries or these confusions come because we do not realize that every planet, either it's Venus or 7th house or 7th Lord, they have a definite, specific, unique role to play in our horoscope, irrespective of each other. What do I mean by this? I mean to say that the seventh house has a function which will hold to irrespective of how Venus is placed. Yes. And it's the same with Venus. Venus will do his job or her job <laughs> irrespective of the seventh house or even irrespective of the sixth house. All right. So, what does it mean? So the question is, will a uh, good Venus nullify a bad 7th house? Okay, but you can use this video for the other way around also. Okay, as I said, will a good 7th house nullify a bad Venus? Okay, so the question is very simple, but the answer is not very simple. The answer is, it depends. Well, first of all, the answer, if you want a direct answer to this, the answer is no. But I will explain it to you how it can sometimes help, okay? So you have to always understand that nothing nullifies anything in astrology. So people think, like for example, we have uh, Mariada Purushottam, Bhagwan Ramachandra's chart. In his chart, he has Jupiter exalted in Lagna with Mars exalted in the seventh, okay? So many times people think, oh, two exalted planets, that means they are aspecting each other. So they will cancel out each other. No, it doesn't work like that. Now imagine his Jupiter would be in seventh in debility and Mars would be in Lagna in debility. So would, uh, would the debility be cancelled? Well, definitely not. The exaltation doesn't get cancelled. Neither, neither does the debility get cancelled. Now if... <laughs> Mars would be in Lagna in Cancer and Jupiter would be in <coughs> Capricorn in the 7th for Lord Ram. Then you could always give an argument, oh, that's Nij Bhang Raj Yoga. Okay, but Nij Bhang Raj Yoga has a different meaning. It doesn't mean the debility is cancelled. Okay, so when you interpret the words, if you go to Google Translate and you put Nij Bhanga, so then it translates it as, okay, debility cancelled, a literal translation. It is not like that. You cannot translate Sanskrit into English literally, okay? You have to go deep into the meanings and understand what Nijbhang Raj Yoga is. But we will discuss about Nijbhang Raj Yoga some other time, okay? So this is an example which I gave that uh, nothing nullifies anything in astrology, okay? And as usual, if you are new to the channel and uh, if you have not watched my other videos, then you can watch Astrology Basics playlist and OMG Astrology Secrets playlist. I have around four to 500 or maybe 600, yeah, around 500 videos, okay? And yes, if you want a consultation from me regarding your Venus or 7th house of marriage or love, romance, relationships, you can always go to my website down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Okay, so what is 7th house? What is 7th house? What is number 7 and what is house? House means a physical area. Okay, physical area means something which is visible, which is tangible, which is concrete. What is that? Number 7, that is marriage. See, marriage means the event of wedding. Un unless you are married, then, then it is the event of wedding. Okay. And for the event of wedding to happen, a man and a woman has, they have to be uh, together, right? I mean, together means they have to be at one place. And there has to be a priest or a pujari or pandit or somebody who has to, or that kazi in uh, Islam, or whichever tradition you belong to, whichever religion you belong to, they have to 
uh, sanctify the marriage. The, you have to take the necessary vows and then uh, the priest or the pandit or the kazi has to sanction that. Okay. Uh, unless that is done, that's not marriage. That's the seventh house. Okay. So that means if there is a difficulty in the seventh house, then it is difficult for you to reach to that physical existence of your life when you and your two be spouse are uh, standing together or they are sitting or they are going round and round and taking this sat or they are so saying yes kubul hai kubul hai in islam or whatever it is that physical existence is difficult for you it is difficult for you to reach from a normal situation Normal means you, either you are single or you are in a relationship with somebody. But to reach to that destination, it is difficult. Yes, there are cases I know where people have had a difficult seventh house and the things have been so uh, peculiar and so uh, weird sometimes that everything is finalized, the marriage is finalized and tomorrow they are getting married. And then I am like, oh yeah, how in the universe are they getting married? And then just before the wedding, they come to know that their grandfathers are the bride or the groom, grandfather expired, grandmother expired, one hour before the wedding. Yes. So what does it mean? It means that everything happened, but that final, that final one thing didn't happen, which would open up the seventh house. Or you would also say, you know, the legal marriage or whatever. Now, nowadays, generally, the legal marriage is maybe after one or two days or before sometimes. So let's consider that the ceremony and the legal marriage is in one day. So the thing is, ultimately, the seventh house is not opening. Yes. So if you have a difficult seventh house, it will create challenges in that area. Now, how do you know if you have a difficult challenge, seventh house? There are many factors for a difficult seventh house. Okay. Now you may think, oh, Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu, Sun in seventh house is very difficult. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that that is one factor, but that's not all in all. The most difficult placement in a horoscope for the seventh house is association with the sixth house. Remember, irrespective of the planet and the lordship of that planet. Which means, suppose the seventh lord is in the sixth or the sixth lord is in the seventh or a prominent sixth house that is the most difficult thing to have in a horoscope for marriage now you may think i have three planets in the sixth or how did i get married well it might happen that in the bhava chart they are actually in the fifth house so when i am saying that a difficult uh, a prominent sixth house i don't mean the lagna chart okay i mean the bhava chart our chart means uh, suppose your ascendant is at 15 degrees so according to some calculation so well, let's talk with an example suppose you are a leo ascendant okay and your ascendant is at purva falguni first pada 15 degrees of leo okay purva falguni first pada then suppose you have a planet in capricorn so for leo ascendant capricorn sign is in the sixth house okay but because the ascendant is starting at 15 degrees here according to depending on which bhav chalit calculation you take some calculations consider the bhav madhya and all that, that that's a separate topic we'll discuss that some other time but suppose you consider that the house degree is the degree of the uh, the ascendant degree is the degree for all the houses okay so suppose a Leo ascendant has three planets in Capricorn. All the three planets are in uh, Uttara Shada, for example. Uttara Shada is up to first 10 degrees of Capricorn. Okay. First Pada is in Sagittarius. The last three, 10 degrees, is in Capricorn. So that means all the three planets are in Capricorn, 100%, no doubt. But According to that calculation of the bhava chart, it is not in the sixth house. It is in the fifth house because his house calculation starts from 15 degrees. Remember this. Okay. So therefore, you may be thinking, many people will write, oh, you are speaking nonsense. You are speaking lies here. I have, I have four planets in sixth house and I got married. No, you have it in the sixth sign from the ascendant, not in the sixth house. Okay. 
or it may happen you have five planets in the sixth house in your bhav chalit also but maybe you have three planets in the seventh house or you have planets in the second or eleventh okay two seven and eleven these three are houses of marriage remember second seventh and eleventh second house is the family seventh house is the marriage the legal union the concept of staying together under sanction of the scriptures and the society that's what is the seventh house and eleventh house is fulfillment of desire a sense of friendship which is very important in marriage so now suppose you uh, you 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 have a difficult seventh house okay so i said difficult means not that there are saturn rahu ketu sun mars these malefics there that is difficult of course but 10 20 100 000 million times more difficult is uh, if the lords of 2 7 and 11 are placed in the sixth okay for marriage i'm saying for career it may be great i'm not talking let's forget career for now so therefore or if the lord of the sixth uh, is in these houses okay like second or seventh or eleven then then also that could be a bit challenging but more challenging and then then that is lord of these three are sitting in the sixth okay so sixth lord in second seventh eleventh is not a very big problem but yeah second seventh and eleventh lords in the sixth is a bit of a problem though or another problem would be if the lords of these three houses are sitting in dusthanas because dusthanas are generally by default difficult houses dusthanas don't open very easily you need to put a lot of struggle and sixth house by default is one of the dusthanas but here i'm talking of the other dusthanas also okay so second lord in 12th or seventh lord in 12th seventh lord in 8th in the bhav chart repeated disclaimer not lagna chart go to your bhav chart and see don't write here i have planets here there in lagna not lagna chart not dashi chart in your bhav chart disclaimer okay because ultimately the result comes from the bhava the house not from the rashi okay so therefore suppose you have these difficult placements okay so then it can happen that either your marriage doesn't get finalized or you are seeing proposals but you somehow can't get married okay or there is another condition there are too many planets in the nakshatra of the sixth lord so what do i mean by this so uh, let's take the example of uh, this uh, leo ascendant okay so for leo ascendant you have uh, saturn as the sixth lord okay now of course saturn is also the seventh lord so maybe leo is not a good example or let let's take leo all this. forget that Saturn rules the seventh also. Imagine that Saturn is ruling uh, only the sixth. Okay, let's imagine like this for the time. This is just to explain to you. So in that case, what will happen? So which nakshatras does Saturn rule? Which are the nakshatras which are ruled by Saturn? Saturn lords Pushya nakshatra, lords Anuradha and Uttar Bhadra Pada. So if a Leo ascendant has uh, too many planets in Pushya, Uttar Bhadrapada, or Anuradha, it can also be challenging for marriage, okay, to get married, okay, for the event of wedding to take place. But again, as I always say, it depends on the entire chart. Maybe you have many planets uh, which are in the nakshatras of the planets uh, which are ruling 2nd, 7th, and 11th also. So then uh, your marriage might happen. So not to create fear here. But suppose you have a difficulty in your 7th house, okay, difficult 7th house. So then the event of wedding could be difficult. But now what's the use of Venus? Venus is the Karaka for marriage. And Venus is the natural significator also, which, all, which means Karaka, of course. So it means that unless Venus is linked with the sixth house very badly, it generally does not deny you marriage. It gives you marriage very easily. I've seen for 99% of the people. They get married in Venus Pratyantar or Antar without having any association with the 2nd, 7th or 11th. Unless it has associations with the 6th house, which means either it is sitting in 6th or lording the 6th. Unless that is the case, Venus gives you marriage. Provided the other Dasha lords are supporting. So suppose you have uh, Jupiter Mahadasha. Jupiter is in the 7th. Then you have Saturn Antar Dasha and then you have Venus Pratyantar. So Saturn is in 11. Let's example. Jupiter is in 7, Saturn is in 11. Unless Venus is in 6th or it is lording the 6th, generally you can get married if you are around 25 or above, above 25 these days. So now Venus is the Karaka for marriage. So what does a Karaka do? Karaka 
gives you the fruit of the merits okay so therefore what does it mean fruit 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 means how much will you enjoy your married life how much will how much will you uh, how much will you be happy in your married life so don't use this karaka statement independent of the dashas so what do i mean now let me clarify this is a big clarification people read that oh venus indicates happiness of married life okay but now what if let's take an example somebody is running saturn mahadasha and his saturn is placed in the 6th house so saturn mahadasha is 19 years okay so what will happen now what in the universe will happen if a person gets married with saturn in 6 with a 19 year mahadasha because ultimately whatever happens in your life is dependent and decided by the dashas remember golden principle of astrology okay transits are useless to analyze without the sun and that is what 99% of the people do uh, they make all these blunders because uh, they think that we will just analyze transits because that's very easy right yeah. and then your predictions fail and then you insult astrology you criticize astrologers so it's your mistake basically therefore now suppose venus is very good in somebody's chart but because the dasha of the 6th house is running and assuming that person is married to somebody okay let's take before marriage so suppose venus is great and somebody's 6th house is very prominent and he is running the mahadasha of that house it is very difficult to even get married okay but suppose let's imagine the person got married okay and now his venus is very good so that's what we were discussing right good venus mitigating a bad 7th house bad 7th house means 6th house very prominent Or let's imagine the eighth lord is in seventh, or twelfth lord is in seventh. Some crazy placement. You imagine like this. Or the seventh house is very badly afflicted by two or more malefics. Suppose there are two malefics like Saturn and Rahu, the worst of the malefics, sitting there. Okay. Sun, Mars, and Ketu you can still handle, but Saturn, Rahu together, very difficult. Okay. you really need to uh, do uh, om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and uh, om namo narayanaya properly if you have these two planets related to venus or seventh house please do it okay 108 times every day morning without fail both of these two mantras okay now the thing is if that happens that suppose let's assume his venus is exalted and his saturn is in the sixth house and the seventh house is decent with some affliction some good things all right and then his saturn mahadasha runs and the person is already married so what will happen now the sixth house denies you marriage or gives you a feeling of as if you are married but you are not married which means there is no closeness or there is no connection there is no intimacy with the spouse not not sexual intimacy it can be emotional or mental or in any kind of closeness or any connection a lack of connection basically okay or a feeling to separate from the spouse but now because he is running the dasha of the 6th house he will get that feeling that oh maybe my married life is not working because ultimately the dasha will decide what happens okay but suppose this person has a exalted venus like for example a fancy scenario is saturn is in 6th or any planet in 6th and his mahadasha runs and his venus is exalted so now what will happen because venus is exalted his awareness of relationships is very high because of that what will happen depending on the entire horoscope it can take either of the two routes okay so now comes the answer can a good venus mitigate a bad seventh house it depends so the first route is suppose his overall horoscope is very good not the seventh house okay overall horoscope which means his lagnesh is well placed or his sun moon and uh, the ascendant is also good and his atma karaka is well placed or uh, his and most importantly his trine and lords are well placed lords of the 5th and 9th they are well placed then condition number 1 case case 1 is all these things are good or relatively it is good you understand this person is a good person uh, and then he has a very great venus venus is exalted and he is running the south the 6th house so then what will happen now he'll get that feeling of being single or celibate even within the marriage that cannot be stopped but because overall chart is very good and he has a very great venus so therefore he 
will be able to drink that poison, but he will still not separate. Yes. Because he will accept, because he will feel, see, exalted Venus means selflessness. Okay. Depending on these other placements, do not forget the other conditions which I said. Okay. All these other three, four planets which you need to check. Then this person will be selfless and he will he will feel that okay if this is in my karma i will accept my my karma so if he's a man he will think okay i will do my duties as a husband to my wife and if she's a lady then she will feel okay i will do my duties as a good uh, wife to my husband now either he or she reciprocates or not that is up to them all right now condition two venus is exalted saturn in sixth or sixth house dasha is running and these other houses, the lords of these other houses are not well placed. Ascendant is not good. Ascendant lord is not good. Sun is not good. Moon is not good. Fifth lord is not good. Ninth lord is not good. The fifth house is not good. Ninth house is not good. Atma Karaka is not good. Nine conditions, my God. <laughs> then what will happen? He will be more frustrated with that exalted Venus. Why? Because now... Because the other placements are not good, so the exalted planet can sometimes uh, behave in weird ways. Weird ways means that one area can become, a, because see, if the overall horoscope is not good, I've seen an exalted or a debilitated planet has more, uh, more trouble creating probabilities. Even an exalted and a debilitated. Why? Because exaltation and debilitation uh, can mean... Uh, very high awareness or very low awareness of something. Okay. So, very high of something is very dangerous and very low of something is also very dangerous. But if the overall, the other nine conditions which I said, if they are good, then the person can handle these energies properly. So, then if, if, if these other conditions are good, then this person with an exalted uh, planet, any planet, will not do excess of that. And debilitation means the person will uh, not denigrate that planet. Okay, that means the person will not say these traits are bad. Okay, so suppose somebody has a bad Venus, Venus in Virgo, or Venus is an enemy sign like Leo or Cancer or something, and the whole chart is very good. Then the person may feel that okay, relationships are good if it's good, but I'm not obsessed with it. The person is not obsessed necessarily. Okay, but if the chart is bad or the overall chart, then what can happen is this person may feel that oh, all relationships are useless. If she's a man, he will feel all women are liars, cheaters. And if she's a woman, then she'll feel oh, all these men, they are you know, they are narcissists or they are you know, uh, they I mean, they are not good people basically. Okay. So therefore uh, I have seen with a difficult horoscope and both exalted and debilitated planets give you suffering. I have seen this, okay, because they cannot balance that area. It's like they go towards extremes, either very good or very bad. Okay. And if the chart is good, then even a debilitated planet doesn't do that bad, I have seen. Okay, because the person is humble enough to admit that I am not good in that area of life. Okay, but if the chart is bad, then Venus is also bad. Then what happens? You advise something something to that person. The person becomes very egoistic. He says, you know, suppose Mang, uh, Mars Rahu is in the ascendant and he has a debilitated Venus. And then you tell him, oh, why are you behaving like this with your spouse? Or then this person will blast on you because that Mars Rahu thing is there in the ascendant. He will blow off anybody, he or she. So uh, then, then in that case, if the other placements are bad and he is Dasha of the sixth house is running, then he can cheat, he, he or she can get into extramarital affairs or get into addictions and because he's not, he or she is not able to handle that high awareness because then 24 hours the person's brain will be pinching like this that oh look look your married life is not good it's not working, he is so happy, she is happy they are happy only, you are not happy, you are miserable, you are pathetic your karma is terrible he or she will always keep feeling like this and get into depression. They cannot handle this energy of exaltation. Because if their planet is exalted, the person will be thinking about it 24 hours. And then imagine, Venus is the character for 7th house. You want a good married life. You want a good connection. And then all you are getting is celibacy and no connection. How frustrating that is. Okay. 
But case number one, if the horoscope is good, then the person makes peace with that fact. So in that case, you can say that a good Venus can mitigate, not cancel out, can try to, can help you to still be positive if you have a bad seventh house or a difficult seventh house. But if the overall chart is not good, if these factors which I said they are not supporting Venus or the seventh house or the overall chart basically, then an exalted Venus cannot save a bad seventh house, okay, or a prominent sixth house. <laughs> okay, so that is it from my side, and you can use this the other way around also. If the seventh house is very good and Venus has very bad afflictions in the horoscope and it's in a very precarious situation, then also you can use the same principles okay to judge can a good seventh house protector protect venus or not uh, but that i will leave up to you let me see how much uh, you have understood so you can write it down in the comments uh, about your research on a bad venus and a very good seventh house okay and lastly i forgot to say you will never find a horoscope where they will have you know five planets in six thousand exalted venus or you know exalted planet in seven so these are all scenarios which i have given you so that you develop your thinking okay and you try to think yourself so for so for god's sake if you write things in the comments oh now my rahu is in sixth when will i get married or will i get divorced so don't I mean, use some basic common sense. I've given you nine factors here. So before you comment something like this, think 10 times, okay? Not that I'll, uh, I, I won't like your comment, but the thing is, I cannot answer it because I said there are nine, seven, eight, nine factors which will ultimately decide. But I know there are uh, half of the people who have made it till here. The, the remaining half would have not seen the whole video. So they'll see the topic, they'll start typing. So. You will have a good laugh if you comment all these things here, okay? Because others will come to know that you have commented something like this, okay? And whoever comments like this without understanding what I have said, I will, I will answer like this. Please watch the video. Your answer is in the video, <laughs> okay? And if somebody has commented without seeing this thing, without understanding that you must see all the nine factors, then... If you have seen somebody writing like this, then you also reply to them that there are so many factors to see, okay? So therefore, please don't expect replies when you ask such questions. My Mars is in seventh house, will I get married, okay? You may get married tomorrow, you may never get married, okay? Or you may be already married. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your patience and for your time. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, then please go down to the description section of my website, uh, of my videos where you'll find my website, okay? God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. <laughs>